In this video, we're gonna talk about what to name your coaching business and how to choose a good name. I'm Greg Faxon, and I'm starting a fitness coaching business on the side, documenting the whole process as I go through my own course called Coaching Business Bootcamp, and this week was all about positioning. And a big part of positioning your brand in the mind of your potential clients is choosing a great name. And so a big question that I get asked is, hey Greg, should I name my coaching business with just my own name? So for example, my current business is gregfaxon.com. Should I do that, or should I choose a separate brand name for my coaching business? There's pros and cons to each, but my general advice is use your own name unless you have a specific reason not to. What I mean by that is if your own name is long, it's hard to pronounce, it's hard to spell, or the URL isn't available, then you might not want to use your own name. Now, obviously, if the URL for your name isn't available, you could do you know, gregfaxon.coaching.com if gregfaxon.com wasn't available, or I could have done gregfaxon.co or gregfaxon.com. Um, me. So there's lots of options to get around that, but if the general yourname.com isn't available, you might consider going with a separate brand name just to make it easier to remember and easier for people to find it. One reason why you might want to go with a separate brand name is if you want to sell your business in the future. A lot of coaches don't even think about this or consider it, but you may get to the point in your business where you get bored, you want to work on other projects, you want to uh, partner with a bigger company that can help you expand. So if you decide to sell and it's attached to your name, then it's going to be a lot harder to sell. It's going to be less valuable because they can't take you with the business once they buy it. So if that's a consideration for you, you might want to consider going with a separate brand name or like I said, if your name doesn't really make sense to have that be the brand because it's hard to pronounce or hard to spell. So once you've made that decision, are you going with your own name or a brand name? If you're going with yourname.com, you're done. That's your name. Um, if you're going with a brand name, I have a couple tips to help you create a good one. You want two things from a name. The first is you want it to be memorable. Now, how do you make something memorable? You want to use short words, a short name. The longer your name is, the harder it is to remember. If you can, use alliteration or rhyme. For example, Bed Bath & Beyond uses a little alliteration. Bed Bath & Beyond, it all starts with B. Uh, or Coca-Cola uses alliteration as well, but it also uses rhyme, right? Coca-Cola. So if you can use alliteration or rhyme, that will help people remember it. And the second thing, we want it to be memorable. We also want it to be specific. Specific to what? We want it to be specific to the outcome that you provide or how you do things differently or who it's for. So if when I see your name, I can actually know what you do or have a sense of who you serve, then that's going to be helpful for me. Of course, a lot of tech startups have names like Ziggly or whatever, and it doesn't mean anything and it doesn't make sense. And you might be able to get away with that type of name, but you're gonna start fighting an uphill battle. So I'd much rather you base your name on who you serve or how you help them or, or what you do for them. So try to be memorable and specific if you choose a name other than your own name. And I want you to watch out to not get bogged down in the naming process. It's one of those things that as coaches we can sort of use to creatively avoid the real work of a business, which is going and putting yourself out there and getting clients. So if you're spending months brainstorming names, just know that you've probably reached a point of diminishing returns, right? You're not necessarily gonna come up with a name that's gonna make or break your business at the end of the day. So just go with the name and start getting clients and start actually marketing yourself. So the final thing I wanted to share with you is my own name, the new name for this coaching business that I'm starting on the side alongside gregfaxon.com. And so I'm gonna share the name with you and then I'm gonna share with you the onlyness statement for this new business. And the onlyness statement is a concept by Marty Neumeyer. He talks about it in his book, Zag. So the name of the new fitness coaching business I started is going to be Enough Fitness, Enough Fitness. And here's the onlyness statement for it. Enough Fitness is the only fitness coaching company that approaches weight loss from the inside out for high achievers who want to look and feel great at a time when most fitness brands only amplify people's insecurities. I'm going to break that down for you quickly, but if you want to go deeper into only in a statements, make sure you get that book Zag, or obviously you can take my course and we apply it to coaching businesses there. So Enough Fitness is the only fitness coaching company, that's the what, what does it do, that approaches weight loss from the inside out. That's the how, which is the differentiating statement. That's what makes this business different, right? A lot of fitness coaching companies work with meal plans and uh, exercise, and that's all they do, but we go deeper, okay? Uh, for high achievers, that's who we serve, who want to look and feel great 
That's why, that's the customer need statement, why they invest in fitness coaching at a time when most fitness brands only amplify people's insecurities. And that's the when, that's the underlying trend that's going to fuel this brand and make it even more relevant uh, because of its differentiator. So I hope that's helpful. I hope it's fun to hear uh, my name and my only in a statement and we'll talk next week. Hey, so thank you so much for watching that video. If you've been enjoying my tips and my strategies around building a coaching business, then I want to invite you to a live event that I'm doing in September called Foster Your Roster. It's going to be in Washington, D.C., September 29th and 30th. And what's really cool is it's going to be two focused days, a weekend event that's going to help you figure out a game plan for the next six months of your marketing. So if you don't know where your next client is going to come from, if you feel like marketing has felt like a chore or you just get overwhelmed by all the things that you could be doing, these two days are gonna be a really condensed version of being able to create a strategy that's gonna work for your personality, that's gonna work for your strengths, and it's gonna help you create a line of paying clients and build a six-figure coaching business. So I'm really excited for it. I would love to see you there. If you want some more details on how to sign up, go to fosteryourroster.com and you can learn more about it and you can sign up if it is a good fit for you. Take care.